Cool. Hi, so um, I'm Oliver. I'm going to talk about um, building static websites with Stobbin. Uh, I'm a senior developer at a company called Microserve. We're a specialist Drupal development shop in Bristol. Um, now I use Stobbin as well as, as, well as Drupal. Um, what is it? It's a static site generator. It's written in PHP, which is why I'm here talking to you about it at a PHP meetup. Um, it's a command line interface tool, so you, you can promote it on the command line. Um, it's built on Symfony's HTTP kernel. Uh, and essentially, it takes a mixture of HTML, Markdown, and Twig templates and builds a static site that you can, you can deploy. <coughs> So what do I use it for? I use it for my personal website. So I've been running Sculpin for about a year now, I think. It was on Drupal for quite a while. It's also been running on Jekyll. Um, it's probably running on Sculpin. Um, I use it for HTML prototyping. So there's some projects where we don't jump straight into Drupal. Um, maybe we do um, templates up front or something. So there's definite advantages to having a static site generator that's outputting your HTML rather than working with 20, 30, 50 different um, independent templates. Uh, and also for getting used to YAML and, and Twig. So if anybody saw my Drupal 8 lightning talk, um, we're using tw uh, Twig as our default theming engine and YAML for our configuration going forward. Um, and maybe even trying to learn some Symfony. So I've been playing with Symfony for a little while and the opportunity to maybe <coughs> extend uh, Sculpting with Symphony bundles was something that was um, quite appealing. So installation, um, there's a three-line installation process, or two lines that are mandatory and one line that is optional. Uh, you use curl to download the, uh, the file library, uh, you make it executable, and then you can move it somewhere that's globally accessible, or you could just leave the fi file in your, uh, in your project. Um, I also wrote an Ansible role, so if you do your provisioning of your servers or your uh, local setup using Ansible, you can use, use the role. Um, so since we're using Sculpin, um, it has two main directories. Um, all the files, your configuration is in app slash config, and your source files live in a directory called source. The Sculpin generate command is the one that actually does the magic and builds, builds the thing. Um, you can pass it, th well, the three main options I use are dash r server that actually opens up a, a React web server and shows your site on a local host, dash r watch, which um, obviously updates every time you add or update a file, uh, and dash r env to pass it uh, an optional uh, environment parameter, so everything is um, dev by default, um, but you could pass any um, arbitrary staging uh, production environment name that you need really. Um, so the source files, uh, this one's an example of a markdown file, lives within the source directory. Um, we have the, the top two lines is where we're using um, the front matter in YAML, so if you use Jekyll you're probably quite familiar with this. Um, and everything below that is the actual contents of the file. And this is building a very simple scope inside. So in this case, I'm building um, an app directory, and then within that, no, oh, sorry, I'm building a source directory, uh, and within there, building index.md. The app file is um, app directory is actually optional. Providing empty front matter, and then providing some body, um, some content. So we've got one index.md, and then running the sculpting generate server um, that just watch command that generates an output and it's called dev directory with the compiled HTML. And this is what we get at the end. And then we get hello PHP Southwest. So we can get from nothing to a very basic site very quickly. This is fun using videos for my slides. I haven't tried this before. Um, so configuration, as I say, lives in um, app slash config. It's all done in YAML. So sculpin underscore site dot YAML and then sculpin underscore site underscore environment name dot YAML. Um, which I'll show in a minute. Um, it's all stored in key value pairs. So we have um, a title, we have foobar, where basically you can put whatever you want in the, in the front matter in, um, in the config file. And then 
main menu links is how I do the menu links on my site. So um, an actual list of objects that make up my main navigation. Um, so again, I've updated this layout somewhat to have um, a twig block, twig content block, and a uh, header include. Oh, you can see them on the left-hand side there. Um, the header include just has a title tag, which is hard-coded. Uh, and then my index file is now using the default layout that we just saw. And this is the output that we get. Um, what we can then do is, within um, the stop in site YAML file, is include um, a titleless configuration. And replace the title tag with um, Twig's curly brace syntax. And then um, whatever key value you give it, you pr uh, prefix it with site dot whatever, and it renders it in the page. Um, this is me waiting for it to load, and then I realize that sometimes you have to stop the watch and restart it if you edit something in a config file in a second. Um, I'll realize that, <laughs> and then you can see um, the title tag um, updating uh, four lines down. So rather than hard coding things in the templates, we can abstract the things like into um, configuration files. And as I say, we can use environment settings as well. So in this case, I'm making a new um, configuration file, sculpting site prod.yaml. So it's obviously going to be my production configuration. Uh, we can import the, uh, the base one, so we don't lose any data. So we're just extending it, essentially. Um, and I'm going to add a production-specific variable called Google Analytics Tracking ID. Um, this isn't my actual Google Analytics ID, but it would be pretty cool if it was. Um, the theory then being is within the template, we can then use um, Twig conditional statements. So we can use an if statement to check if that variable is set. And if it is, we can then um, output the thing that we want to output. So again, we get the site dot prefix variable name wrapped in the if statement. Um, and then we can do, do the thing. Deliberate mistake is also that comment doesn't work in HTML, which I didn't realize till afterwards. Um, so we can add some template code. Um, this time we're going to run the same command again with the, uh, the dash e prod. So we're going to run the site this time in the, envir in the production environment. Uh, this makes a new output underscore prod, so output underscore uh, environment name. And you can see that on the prod site there was the code and on the dev site there wasn't. So that's one use case that's fairly common. So I've spoken a little bit about YAML front matter already. So um, layout and title I use quite a lot. Um, draft is a sculpting thing, so if you're using the prod environment, it won't display anything as a draft. Um, but you can just keep adding more things. So in this case, I've got a tag, a list of tags, and then yeah, you just keep adding more things as you need them. So these these values are all arbitrary. So I use them on my talks for sl slide URLs, for joined in URLs, um, everything really. Just add what you want in the key value type syntax. Um, and even then, so everything so far is quite meta, so they don't actually affect the page as such, so it says what template it uses. <coughs> but we can actually use the front matter variables within a page. So in this case, within the front matter, I've got um, testimonials, uh, which is a list of objects, and then within the actual page content, we can use a twig for loop to loop through um, the page dot variable, um, the page dot object, and then loop through it as, as we would before before. Eight minutes. Um, so Sculpt and Oscar's content types. So this is one of the, the nice things that appealed to me coming from a, a Drupal background. Um, if we use, use Sculpt to generate uh, prototypes up front, we can easily um, mimic the data model that we're using within Drupal within Sculpt because we use the same content types. So within Sculpt and it's all kernel, we can pass it as Sculpt content types. Um, value, then the keys of which context you want to use, and then some configuration so we can set things like permalinks, um, the single value names, the directory it finds the, the uh, content in, etc. And then we can use this data on the page. So with maybe a portfolio, we use, use the user keyword, pass it an array or a list of which concepts to use, and those become available within the data dot thing, so we can use data.projects as our, um, our for loop. 
Um, so yeah, extending scalping was something that was quite interesting. So you can extend it with custom bundles, which essentially are symphony bundles, which I'm trying to learn. Um, you can write your own twig extensions, and you can integrate it with other symphony components or other PHP libraries. So my site, I've got a very basic B hat main test setup that checks it still loads after rebuilding it. And this is a tweet that I came across um, the other day um, where somebody said that integrating Sculpin and some Symphony components uh, for their new site was very powerful and productive and they should maybe blog about it, to which I said, yes, you should, because that sounds very interesting. So it opens up um, a wide variety of options, I think, so something that's quite simple to use but also is a great chance to be um, extended as you need to. Um, I've put a list together of resources, there's a blog post on my site, so these are the ones I did from a Drupal Camp presentation um, a few months ago, but they're applicable now. And I'm on 10 minutes, so some time for some questions. Yeah? Um, you've got less than 1,000 pages on the site, how long would it take to rebuild everything? Is it a matter of minutes, seconds, or days? Um, oh no, mine, so mine I've got multiple things. So I've got each post is its own type, each talk is its own, sorry, each post is its own file, each type is its own file, but also it builds XML feeds based off different things. So mine builds quite a lot on each build, and it runs in its minutes, if, if that. And presumably when you make a change on a single file, <coughs> you will only rebuild that one file from the whole site? I'm not sure, I think so. So if you were editing your, your blog, and mm -hmm. you say, It's. I've never. It, it's. I never had a reason to look. It's, it's always been pretty quick for me. I've never had to wait more than 10, 20 seconds for it to load on any things that I've built personally. And the other thing I do is I use it on a CI environment. So I, if I push to my GitHub repo, I have a Jenkins thing that sits there and rebuilds it um, on a remote server. So. Yeah, so I don't tend to make very small changes locally. I don't really see it building in, in real time. Any other questions? Cool. Do you want that thing? Cool. All right. Thank you very much.